Okay, so how many do you want to look at? Well, in this case, it you know I feel like I could draw a uh, kind of extended city block zone and capture maybe I don't know five of the points. Okay, let's do this. Let's find our five our five nearest neighbors. So let's see. This is clearly close. It's one over here, and um, I say this is close. I say this one is close. This one's close. None of the other blue ones are actually that close. And I'd say that's the next closest one. So here are my little five points that all seem relatively near. So what does that tell you? Well, I mean, it's it, it feels like it suggests red is not a bad choice here. Hmm. It's in a reddish part of town. Yeah, yeah, I get that. So, so you think it's pretty fair thing to bet that this should be red then? Yeah, I mean, I think... If you were really asking me seriously, I would I would wonder about that blue point to the right of the highway and whether that had any influence. Uh, that's pretty far away. Yeah, it's not that far away. Well, in Atlanta, once you cross highways, you might as well be an infinite distance away. Well, so, okay, but that's a good point then. So I guess I was interpreting your no notion of distance as being, you know, like straight line distance on the map. But maybe that doesn't make sense for this kind of neighborhood example. Hmm. No, that's a good point. So we've been talking about distance sort of implicitly, but this notion of distance is actually quite important. So maybe distance is straight line distance, maybe it, as a crow flies, maybe it's driving distance, maybe it has to take into account the fact that when you cross highways in Atlanta, you're typically moving into a completely different universe. Um, these sorts of things matter. Yeah, so I could imagine, um, I don't know, like Google Maps distance. Right. Or how many different paths can you get there and which is the shortest one giving the traffic? There's all kinds of things like that you could do. Yeah. So so that's fair. That's fair. But that just says that this, this distance, we have to be very careful what we mean by distance, and that's okay. Um, but let's just say for the sake of this discussion that these are the closest points by some reasonable measure of distance. So in that world, would you be happy if you had to pick a single example, a, a single output, a single label of red, uh, blue, or green, would you be happy picking red? Yeah. I mean, you know, not ecstatic, but okay. That's fair. So I like this. So we, we went from just picking our nearest neighbor to picking our nearest neighbors. And what's a good value you think we should, we should stick to with neighbors? We started with one, and that clearly wasn't good. Uh, you picked, at least not in all cases, and you came up with five. So what do you think? What, 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 if I wanted to call this algorithm something, what do you think? Five nearest neighbors? What do you think? What should I call it? Five seems good. I mean, I feel like that's, that's got to be universal. The number five? Yeah. Well, it is in Atlanta, but it might not be universal in wherever it is you are. We'll call it the Georgia Tech nearest neighbors. That doesn't seem like an, an algorithm that's going to gonna be used very much. Uh, fair enough. All right, so what about we could do as many nearest neighbors as is appropriate. Well, maybe we should just make it a free parameter and call it K. Okay, I like that. K nearest neighbors. So we'll have K nearest neighbors, and we'll pick our K neighbors. Oh, you said something fancy there, by the way. You said free parameter. I like that. We should we should come back to that again. So we have an algorithm, k nearest neighbors, which takes um, k nearest neighbors as a way of deciding how you're going to label some query point here. And we've identified two parameters to the algorithm so far: k, uh, which is the number of neighbors we're going to use, and some notion of distance. Oh, sure. Which here we were kind of using in the sort of obvious way, but there might be other ways we might want to use distance here. Yeah, like I could imagine if the houses d if had additional features like how many square footages they had. Right, stuff like that. That would make perfect sense. So so really distance, we're using distance here in a kind of an overloaded sense because this is something that's on a map. But really distance is a stand-in for similarity. Ah, similarity, good. It's kind of stand-in for the opposite of similarity. <laughs> well, distance is just a kind of similarity, right? But in the case of you know points on a map, similarity, it sort of makes sense because as you said, with when we're talking about real estate, location, location, location matters. So there, similarity really is kind of the inverse of distance. Uh, but in other ways, things like the number of bedrooms you have, whether you're on one side of the highway or the other, the school district you're in, things like that, are other things we might add as features or dimensions when we talk about similarity or distance. Okay, so I like this. So I think we have a general algorithm now, and I think it does a pretty good job of addressing uh, the point you brought up. We no longer have to worry about overfitting as much, at least it seems that way to me, um, and we have a way of being a little bit more robust to this, you know, not having an exact data point in the database. So maybe we should turn this into an algorithm. Yeah, let's go for it. Okay, let's do that.